start record, start broadcast. Um, hi everybody, hopefully this is all working out. Uh, so yes, welcome to another week of Shannon Hannigan's Live. I'm Katie Shy, and as you can see I'm flying solo today um, because my brother Shaggy is being a good boyfriend and he is not here, he is hanging out with his girlfriend for her birthday. So yeah, you have me <laughs> trying to figure out how to run a show solo. But, uh, so things are recording, so that's good. And uh, you're probably in the middle of a commercial right now, um, so that's good. And hopefully it's a good one. But um, okay, calm down. And I'm gonna pop out the chat actually because if I can't chat with any of you, then you're just listening to me babble for a bit. So let's get the chat going. Cool, we have Black Ice Angel, hello. Kelhound, hi, hi. Cooper Design, hello. We got it. Cool. Well, welcome, guys. So, if you uh, missed me chatting because of the commercial, I am flying solo today. Um, my brother's not here, but he will be back next week um, before we head out for VanCap, which is going to be really exciting the Vancouver Comic Arts Festival, which is next Saturday, Sunday. So, we will be sure to chat about that in detail um, next Wednesday, 7 30, same time. But, welcome to Shan Hannigan's Live. And I'm going to be drawing and hopefully chatting with you guys. So, if you have anything you'd like to ask, or anything like that. I'm going to make sure that this camera works so that you guys can actually watch over my shoulder while I draw. Logitech. Cool. All right. So I have the Katie Cam set up behind me for today, so you guys can watch over my shoulder. And I'm going to be drawing a commission. Uh, still, some of the Indiegogo commissions actually from the Silly Kingdom project. Uh, there were a lot of those which we're very excited about. So I'm going to be. Getting through those now that a lot of my storyboard deadlines are done. And I'm going to be doing Wonder Woman. So I'm just going to draw up some reference for that. Um, yes. But let me get this stuff ready. All right, so that should work OK. That should be fun. And uh, so how's everybody else doing? How's everybody out there in the Ustream world? This is so weird. Usually I'm used to bouncing off of my brother. <laughs> now it's just kind of talking at the computer screen it's, uh, after a long day of working in a void. It's kind of strange to hear my own <laughs> voice in the room. Oh, Buried in Comics says, Calhound, uh, are you working in comics or are you reading comics right now? Let's get my shirt plugged in so I can actually use equipment. Buried in Storyboards says, Proto Wilson, I hear that. I just got off of some storyboards and now I am on to drawing other things. Non-stop drawing fun. Everybody's working. We're all hard-working people. I'm going to scoot around this camera. Plug in my sharpener. Ugh. Hopefully I didn't move that around too much. Kelhound, I have a 200-ish pages of Sorcery 101 to fix before the next book is ready. That's huge! That's 200 pages of... Wow. That's... I think the longest story uh, I've worked on so far is the Silly Kingdom, and that was maybe 36 pages. I'm slowly working my way up to be able to take on longer form comics. But Black Eyes Angel says, working on character designs, but I have no skills, so, ah, uh, you know, but everything you do is getting you closer. I remember doing character designs in college, and I had no idea <laughs> what I was doing with those either. I draw the character first and put the construction signs on, lines on afterwards, which made no sense. Yeah, Kelly, you're awesome. Kel says, I'm dumb and save them at 72 DPI. Oh, yeah, you save them for internet and now you're getting the, your comic ready for print. That's kind of, yeah, I've heard some people have to, like I was reading about Kate Beaton had to deal with that too when she first got her book going. And a lot of the really shrub monkey comics are really low DPI. Ah. All right, well, everybody's working. Good job, guys. It's Wednesday afternoon and... Some people like to go home and watch TV, but no, we are working and listening to Ustream and hanging out, so let's get started. So I've been drawing some pretty simple cartoony characters all day. I have to kind of get back into a bit more anatomical drawings once again. For Although I guess when people commission me, usually they want something a bit more goofy and cartoony, but this first drawing is going to be more of a, to loosen myself up, just, actually, can you guys see that? Bring this camera down a bit lower. It's down. Maybe that didn't work. Still finessing this a little bit. There, I'll 
try and make sure I draw extra dark. Actually, it would probably help if I got that light sparking over here too. All right, I'm gonna get the lights set up. I'm gonna still chat with you guys. I'll be right back. Lights just over here. All right. So normally my brother uh, Shaggy gets to be in charge of all the awesome topics of dialogue, and I get to just kind of go along for the ride. And uh, so today I'm gonna be taking on more all the work. And this is really hard. I don't know how you do this, Shaggy, but awesome stuff. Okay, I think that helps a little bit. Maybe? No? All right. Okay, so drawing over shoulder. Wonder Woman. All right, let's start again. All right, so topics. Uh, Anybody up to any fun comic stuff this weekend? I think the main comic convention is happening. Mecaf, I believe it's called. I haven't signed up to go to that one yet, but someday I'd like to check them all out. I think that'd be a lot of fun. All right, so Wonder Woman. Let's do. We're gonna go for a more cartoony start here. So yeah, I guess one of the things I want to get better at is being able to keep my brain in two places when I'm able to work and chat at the same time, because sometimes it gets tricky to split yourself up, but I'm gonna to work to get better at that, because I'd like to do more drawing demos at conventions and things like that, where I'm able to actually talk about what I'm doing instead of getting thrown by questions. Uh, Callahan says the next convention is Phoenix Comic Con in Arizona. Cool. Will anyone going to that? Hope you have a fun time. Uh, we'll be going, as I mentioned, to uh, my brother and I will be going to Van Calf next weekend. We're very excited. Uh, we finally got our plane ticket very late into the game. <laughs> it kind of took us a while to finally buckle down and say, yes, we're going to even though we had a table first and we had a hostel room booked, but we just didn't get around to booking a flight. And unfortunately that's a little bit expensive, but these are fun events, so it's worth it for the adventure. Um, but I mean, if anyone has any uh, tips for saving up for travel, I know there's credit cards and things you can get that make it a bit cheaper. Because I know we want to keep doing this, we got to figure out how to move around cheaper. I'm gonna do a bit of a wacky run. Photo Wilson, can you claim your flights on taxes? Uh, I believe you can, uh, because you're traveling for work, so there is a travel budget in your freelance taxes. So I do, um, and I'm pretty sure I'm doing that properly. <laughs> I haven't been told not to do that. Uh, but mostly when you travel, like you can claim a lot of uh, food you get, um, especially if you pay for dinners and things like that. And, I mean, because it's always it's always like a business trip, right? You're you're hanging out, you're making contacts, you're you need to eat, you need a, you can write off your hotel, I believe as well. Um, oh man, this is wonky perspective. But Kel says you can also write off comics you buy. I really need to start doing that because I haven't done that yet at conventions. Although, yeah, I, I will. I think it's because when I, I buy books at conventions, I don't get receipts, so I just kind of have a big pile of books. I'm like, awesome! Whereas if I go buy something at a comic shop, I'll have my receipt and I know how to write that off. But yes, good call. You can write off comics you get at conventions, so all the more reason to help support and spread the love and spread a good cheer in comic times. Uh, Proto Wilson says, ah, reference. It is. It's totally a reference. I do that for movies, too. And, you know, maybe I'm not working on a big sci-fi thriller story if I go see a certain movie that's like that. But, I mean, I'm looking at camera angles. I'm looking at, you know, we're artists. We need to be inspired. And that's part of what we... Yeah, this drawing is a little bit of a throwaway. But, you know what? We're warming up. It's all good. There's no pressure. But I do want to get this final one penciled out before the of the show. Storytelling is universal, says Cal. Yes, it is. Absolutely. 
Hoda Wilson, are you looking forward to seeing Prometheus? I am. Um, I heard a lot of talk about it before I even really knew what it was, other than I knew it was Ridley Scott doing another movie, and I really enjoy his direction. And uh, hearing it was set in Aliens world, and I love um, Alien and Aliens, so I was excited for that, but I hadn't seen any trailers for it. I think the first thing I saw was um, uh, uh, Fassbender, uh, that actor, doing like a commercial for a the character David. He's, he's like a prototype android character and that that really got me interested because I really like, yes, happy birthday David. <laughs> yeah, I, that was, I really like that because I love that kind of character that kind of, you know, it's, it's I feel like something's kind of off to kind of like a Hal or a Gertie or, I, I just really, yeah, it got me really excited and then watching the trailer I was like, this is gonna be awesome. So, yes, I am excited for Prometheus. I Excited to see movies. I don't see movies too often in theaters anymore. I almost get this kind of, yeah, but what if people talk? What am I gonna say? But, yeah. All right, it's kinda, well, we're just gonna keep going. Yeah, Prometheus. sure why I did the eyes last on this drawing. That's kind of reverse of what <laughs> generally you should be doing. It's a general artist tip is that the eyes are usually, you know, it's, it's where people will look right here and it's, uh, you know, that's where your acting is and um, I remember even at C2E2 I went to go talk to Jim, Jimmy Palmiotti, uh, writer for Jonah Hex and different comics and he was looking through he was just kind of talking about comic process and just looking through Silly Kingdom. He's like, yeah, basically, you know, it boiled down to its essence a lot of times comics are talking heads and you want to be able to follow the acting. So if you're able to just, you know, make sure you know bubbles going to heads, bubbles going to heads, you know, you got it going right. You can follow the story, you can follow the acting, you can feel for the characters, you're doing it right. So, I, yeah, I mean, she's kind of got this dead expression right now, but she's kind of happy. So that's take one. I'm loosening up. We're going to do another take from here. Black Eyes Angel says, I still haven't managed to see The Avengers. Go, oh, it's fun. If you can, it's it's really fun on a big screen. There's a few movies I feel like I need to... I mean, I might go see Prometheus big screen because it looks pretty awesome. But that one's really fun on the big screen, especially just the... all the epicness of it is really good. It's funny. I, I was really... I don't know what I was expecting um, when it was coming out. I was like, yeah, I'm sure it'll be fun. But I haven't been too hugely hugely in love with the superhero movies, but this one I just really, really liked. I mean, I liked Thor. Um, I enjoyed the first Iron Man. I, I like them all, but this one I just really, really enjoyed. So go see it. I highly recommend it. All right, let's try one. Black Ice Angel says, I am so poor. I went on Tuesday. It was cheaper. It was only, I think, the price of a $6 or something to see it. I want a cheapy Tuesday. All right. Take two. Wonder Woman commission. So I have to be honest, I don't know too, too much about uh, the character of Wonder Woman. Um, growing up on comics, I used to grew up on a lot of my dad's superhero comics, so a lot of Batman, a lot of Spider-Man. And uh, I didn't, there weren't really many girl superhero comics that he picked up. It was, when he was picking up comics for me, it was more Archies and things like that. So, I mean, I know Wonder Woman has a lasso and she has an invisible jet. And stuff like that but and she's an Amazon queen I mean I guess that's the major three but uh, I'm working on a commission I should probably it's nice to have sometimes a little bit extra in there you can throw in as an in-joke for a fan but right now we're just gonna try and... her last two makes people tell the truth excellent What is the truth, Cal? Whose truth? The bracelet stops bullets. I guess, yeah, looking at her costume right now, though, I'm like, but it's only covering a small portion of her physique. Anyways, lady costumes. Just standing on. 
Um, so, hello, endless skies, welcome. If you're just joining us, uh, it is I, Katie, flying solo today as my brother is not around for this episode, but he will be back next week and we will chat about lots of things. But today, uh, mostly, I will be drawing a commission of Wonder Woman and chatting a little bit on the side. Actually, I have a question. Has anyone here ever been to a, a musical, not not a musical theater musical, but like a, an opera or orchestra event kind of thing? Because a bunch of us, uh, my family and I, my brother Shaggy and all of us went to go see um, Holst Planets last Thursday, which is an awesome symphony dedicated to the planets. It's just really good music. And uh, for some reason, after each song, nobody claps it's it's silent in there and it's like we start to clap and then nobody else is clapping and so we just kind of wait until the people on stage you know move their sheets over and get ready but the thing is it's like people aren't clapping but everybody starts coughing so it's like the music stops it's a really great piece it ends and everybody just starts hacking and coughing and, and blowing their noses and like there's got to be a better way to show you appreciate the music than like i know like um yeah, you guys are saying that it's supposed to wait until the end to clap, but I mean, isn't that better than coughing? It was so weird. It was so strange. I was like, oh, I guess I'm just not upper crust enough to know how you're supposed to act at a music event. And I was just coughing and honking, and it was kind of crazy. We started laughing about it after, but... Uh, Black Eyes Angel says, where is Shaggy? Shaggy is celebrating... Oops! Oh no, my screen just went dead. Let me fix that. They didn't. Uh, good. Um, he's at, it's his girlfriend's birthday today, so he's being a good boyfriend and taking her out to a lovely dinner and leaving me here. But that's all good because got you guys. Um, we'll hang out for a little bit today and then next week he'll be back and then we'll catch up on all kinds of stuff. And like I was saying before, it's really hard to carry a conversation. Oh my goodness. He makes it look so natural. <laughs> Frodo Wilson, I love Holst Planets. Yes, it is such good music. It's a, uh, I don't know, I, I don't know the research behind it, but it feels like a lot of music from some epic cinema is kind of influenced by it because you'll hear stings that feel like space music, almost like Star Trek or Star Wars a little bit, took maybe some influence from it. Um, especially, I'm thinking maybe the Jupiter Symphony. Yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, really big music is influenced by it. But just, yeah, Star Trek six opening theme is very much like Mars. Yeah, that one's a really good one. Yeah, if you guys are looking for music to listen to, I recommend YouTubing or buying um, Holst Planets, H-O-L-S-T. And uh, my favorite tracks are Mars and Jupiter. They're just really great tracks. Oh, and Venus is really good too. But basically it's it's a uh, tribute to the planets. And it's really nice music. See, I'm doing it again. I'm not drawing the face. See, the good thing with the, these commission sketches is I get to, you know, you never know what the person commissioning you wants exactly, so you can show them all the different ones and then they can choose or help you decide on what you like. So, not a drawing is wasted, really. Mars Bringer of War is everywhere, says Inhuman Robot. Yeah, I think um, I'd heard it before, but I remember uh, they bring it to play in um, Venture Bros. There's a scene where the two henchmen, the two monarchs henchmen, are finally getting back into being henchmen after a hiatus and uh, he starts singing along with the Mars theme and it's just really ridiculous and epic and we were trying really hard not to do that when we're there. Even our dad's like, dun, 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 I don't know, I'm gonna have to do it. We're like, no, don't embarrass us. So, although like I was really tempted to, but we, we behaved. Kind of making them very, very young looking. Venture Bros is another series I kind of fell behind on. I have so many shows I am not caught up on. The only time I get to watch anything is when I'm cleaning up storyboards because that way I don't have to think too much, but when I'm actually doing storyboard routes, I really need to just sit down to quiet and think about camera shots and acting. So like I said today, I've been working in a void and now I'm just like, ah, oh, talking, what? What is this voice talking to myself? 
<laughs> Endless Sky, I hope you did the Mars thing in the car on the way back. Um, we walked back and yeah, we did that. <laughs> in the busy Toronto streets because we are nerds and we can't help it. Uh, the sad thing about that was I went to tweet about it before we went to the show, but I can't find that sequence on YouTube anymore. It's like they went and cracked down on all the Adventure, time, or Adventure Bros sequences. Kelhound asks, you doing any other con beside VanCap and SDCC this year, San Diego Comic Con? Um, we are doing Con Bravo, which is a convention here in uh, Ontario. It's in Brampton or Burlington? One of the bees um, where my friend Adriana lives. So uh, I'm very lucky to be a guest of honor there this year. I'm very excited, which means I think I get to run a panel, but I have no idea what to do one on. So hopefully I can drag my bro along and Maybe we can just do a live episode of Shanahan's Live and then he can rant about movies and I'll sketch. <laughs> It'll be just like every Wednesday but in front of an audience um, of people sitting in front of us instead of all you folks from all over the place. So more of a local Canadian version. See, I'm drawing wrong today. I mean, but it's, it's important to get the body in there so you know where to fit everything. But I'm like leaving the face and head for last. See, the reason you don't really want to do this is if I mess up the face, then it's, I've drawn this body and there's no... You can tell I've been working digitally for a while. I'm used to being able to make mistakes on the fly and fix it. I have to get more into the analog, definitely. Face drawn paper all the time, and then pretty much when I got into storyboarding, just out of necessity, I had to work digitally because it was faster than scanning. But I've gotten so used to so many cheats that it's, I think, slowing me down. But I mean, I'll, I'll bring a sketchbook with me everywhere I go, so I do a lot of character sketches and people sketches, but yeah, I'm definitely feeling the slowness here. All right, I'm going to work on this. What is it? Oh, um, in Robot. In Human Robot says, what's that interesting face in your desk? Um, this is a series of, actually it was Watchmen coasters I got for Christmas from my uncle. So I think they're the movie characters, but I got them scattered around all over the place. Emily Black? I don't know if that's the actress. Yeah, it's Silk Spectre. She's my coaster. And my glass is not on my coaster that's sitting on the table, so there we go. Alright. So I'm definitely drawing one of them very cutesy cartoony face. See the thing too, it's uh, I'm used to being able to flip my drawings as well to make sure proportions are right. But I guess I can just do it upside down now to see. This is a good tip because basically you look at everything like shapes. You don't get too caught into things you're used to. Oh god, <laughs> Proto Wilson, tell us a story, Katie. <laughs> Proto, why? <laughs> this is hard. Um... I watched the documentary Being Elmo the other day about the puppeteer, I think Kevin Clash, who is the uh, puppeteer behind Elmo, and I found that really, really interesting because I didn't know too much about the guy behind Elmo. I thought it was more a, I don't know, I, you know, I don't know what I thought. I was like, yeah, maybe people go to college for puppeteering and then you audition and you uh, get to be on Sesame Street, um, which is probably the case for some people, but this guy was someone who was creating his own puppets from when he was a kid and performing for schools and just was so in love with puppeteering, he just kind of made it his old um, way of life. He, I think before he was even in his 20s, he was on um, a local TV show and then he was on Captain Kangaroo. And then I think he finally got to work with Jim Henson when he was maybe not even 25. Well, it was amazing. It was such an interesting documentary and just really inspiring. Just, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I love, too, the footage of Inside the Muppet Factory. When uh, There's this one scene where they, they're looking at all the felts and things for designing the Muppets, and they open up this drawer of eyes. And I don't know what it was. It was just seeing all these different, like, eyes with fuzzy eyebrows and eyelashes and things. It was just awesome. I was like, I would love that. I don't know what I'd do with it. I probably stick it on things like toasters and televisions and chairs, but it was just so great seeing that. And I was like, someday I would love to go there. Such a good one. Black Eyes Angel. I watched Elmo with 
my 15 month old sister. She actually sits still for more than two seconds to watch. Yeah, kids love Elmo. They just so cute. Just I guess he's such a kid himself. Frodo Wilson, speaking of Muppets, I must draw something for the Fraggle Rock 30th anniversary. Awesome. Actually, I've got a little bit of a story for that. I will tell you a story, Frodo Wilson. Um, I forget the exact details, uh, but um, our dad works um, making, uh, well, I mean, he used to work making mascots for sports companies and uh, things like that, um, which is why I really like that being Elmo documentary because it reminded me a lot of my parents just working from home making these really cool costumes um, but he went for an edition of Fraggle Rock back in the day and actually got a call back to work on it and I think meet Jim Henson and I was like that is so awesome when he was telling us the story we're like what happened and it was like the callback date was the day they booked a honeymoon <laughs> for my mom and my dad for when they were getting married to go to Disneyland so he had to turn down that job so he'd go for his honeymoon in Disneyland. And I was like, oh, but that's great. But like, oh man, <laughs> Jim Henson. But I'm very glad they did though. But still, that's pretty cool. I can live through my dad and be like, oh, my dad met Jim Henson. So somehow I did, I don't know. <laughs> but I thought that was pretty neat. Mystique says, what kind of pencil are you using? I am using a Prismacolor Colorace. Uh, just kind of the animation pencils. I've got a whole bunch of these hanging around. So they make for nicer, darker lines. I don't know if I'm going to go with this one. But at least it's another optional choice. They're still warm up here. Yeah, because um, with my parents working and making mascots, it's like, you know, pretty much we grew up with a little tiny factory studio downstairs in the basement where it was just all these giant mascot heads, kind of like just big toys everywhere that people would um, commission for my parents to work in, so that was always really cool. But yeah, the doc was really fun. I recommend it if you can find it. It's on Netflix right now, that's where I saw it, being Elmo. If you have Netflix, give it a watch. Oh, something else I want to mention. Um, if anybody has some free time this October, uh, I mean, I know it's a bit of a ways away. Um, the Atlantic Center for the Arts is having another cartoonist residency. And uh, if you guys remember me mentioning way, way back, um, two Octobers ago, I went to a residency where the um, three master artists were Paul Pope, who I studied under, um, and Craig Thompson, um, who was the creator of Blankets and Habibi and Chunky Rice, or Goodbye Chunky Rice and Svetlana Shmokova, <laughs> sorry Svet, I, I don't think I can pronounce her last name, Shmokova. well Svetlana who does um, uh, Drama Con and uh, Night School and a whole bunch of other awesome stuff and they were the three master artists there and it was one of the most amazing three weeks of my life just being there with, I made so many amazing friends, I studied under Paul who taught me how to ink with a brush and Essentially, we lived in this beautiful, for three weeks, in this beautiful Florida residency with palm trees everywhere, like in the middle of a forest. And there was an amazing chef, Chef Tom, who would cook for us. And just, you know, it's close to a beach. We'd bike ride to the beach and, and you know, hang out at the beach at night. It was just beautiful. It was so beautiful. And they're having another comic residency, and the due date is June 6th. So I highly recommend, if you're interested, uh, head on over to, it's the Atlantic Center for the Arts.org. Um, I'm not sure who all of the artists are, but I know one of them is Dean Haspiel, Haspiel who is a New York cartoonist. Um, the other two, I'm, I'm not too familiar with who they are, but if you go over to the website, it will show you um, who's doing it this year. But, I mean, when I signed up for it, it was very last minute. I heard about it through a tweet someone did, just randomly seeing it. And, uh... You know, I signed up, I, I, I filled out the portfolio requirements Paul asked for and the questionnaire and sent it to him, like, I think two days before the due date, like, through UPS. And then, um, pretty much after San Diego Comic-Con, I heard I was accepted and I had an amazing time there. So I really highly recommend if you guys are interested at all, check out the Atlantic Center for the Arts.org. Um, ours was the first year of the Comic Camp Residency and it was so successful that I think they're going to make it um, every other year. They're going to try and focus on that, but basically the center as well, um, it's it's not 
it's um I think it's every month there's a new residency and it's poetry, visual arts, dance, uh, clay making, uh, yeah, it, it's all kinds of different artistic writing workshops. It's just this one happened to be comic focused. So if there's another one, check it out. And if you miss this one, there's probably going to be another one in a couple years. And I know one of my life goals is I'd love to go back as like a master artist at some point when I get really, really good. So uh, keep an eye on that place. It's amazing. So one more time, AtlanticCenterForTheArts.org or the ACA. Um, TV dinner. Sorry I'm late. Hello. Welcome. And I'm sorry it is just... I'm not sorry. <laughs> it's, you get me today. You don't, you don't get Shaggy. Um, but he'll be back next week because he's having dinner plans with his lovely girlfriend, Helen. So next week you can all chastise him for not being here. I think she's river dancing in this pose. I don't know why I drew this pose. <laughs> Endless Sky says it would be awesome, but I don't think I can afford it. Think again, because you can actually apply for uh, financial aid. The residency is 800 bucks and I managed to go for 200 because I applied for financial aid. And I mean, some people were able to, like they make it very, accessible to go because it's it's funded by a bunch of rich folk who love the arts out in Florida. Um, so, you know, they, they understand that it's this isn't like a retreat for, you know, pros rolling and all that sweet comic money. Uh, this is for, you know, us, us, us regular folks just getting started. So they make it very easy for people to, and I mean, you never know. I mean, try it, check it out. Meow, meow, meow is here. I caught this. I actually caught this live for once. Excellent. I hope you come back next week as well and some more shows. Uh, yes. Let me see. Oh, the chat's going. What's, what's going on in the chat? I'm gonna read some chat stuff. Da, 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 da. Oh, sorry, Black House Angel. You turned up the volume because it was quiet and a commercial hit. Yeah, I'm notoriously quiet speaking. I'm gonna try and talk a little bit louder. I hate those commercials. Okay. Mystique, I need to learn how to draw in a more cartoony style. Uh, didn't get into it. Ah, well, I mean, you know, cartoon, I mean, you, you figure out what cartoon, blah, what am I trying to say here? I mean, you know, draw however you enjoy drawing. I mean, for me, a lot of my influences are very Cartoony and all that good stuff. One day I will go to that and I hope I will be sending a portfolio to you. I hope so too, <laughs> in Human Robot. That would be amazing. I, I wish I could bring everybody out. Unfortunately, um, it only accepts eight, eight people. Only eight people get to study under one master artist. And uh, I, you know, I was pretty honored that Paul picked me for his group of eight out of a whole bunch of applicants, but you know what? You never know. You'll never know unless you apply. And I hope you do send me your portfolio. That would be awesome. And it'll be fun times in Florida. You can clearly see I'm not thinking very hard about this drawing. <laughs> oh, Mystique, just as you were saying that, I got hit by an ad, so I didn't get any of what you said. Um, I don't know what I was saying. Uh, oh, about drawing? I mean, yeah, I was just saying draw draw whoever you want to draw. Um, if you draw a structure, that's kind of the biggest thing. Just study, you know, study your basics like anatomy and... I'm going to have to start this drawing again because as I'm talking about anatomy, she's got these tiny little dinosaur arms. Um, I know some, a lot of animation school, colleges don't really like... Uh, they, they don't, it's not that they don't like, it's they... Um, they don't, I don't know the correct word, I'm, uh, like when I was applying to Sheridan, they specifically said they didn't want to see anime in the portfolios. And I mean, mostly I think it's because a lot of young people start out doing anime, they don't draw with a lot of structure, they kind of um, use a lot of cheats and things and they can't rotate a character because uh, they, they don't know how to break down the design properly. Um, but I mean, that can also be true about someone who draws in different styles. But basically, if you can draw with construction, and if you can draw a character that you can animate in solid 3D, that should be fine. Yeah, anime is portfolio poison, unless you're applying to a specific anime school. 
In Human Robot, do you have any drawing books you keep going back to for reference? I have a shelf full of drawing reference. Uh, what should I recommend for you guys? Um, hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. Oh man. Uh, well, I mean, for life drawing, there's always the Vilpu books, V I L P. He's got some great breakdowns for anatomy and life drawing. Uh, I am on the hunt for great anatomy reference. Oh, okay. Well, I'm on the right track. Uh, I would say that. Um, what do I have? Honestly, I haven't been looking at them for a while. Let me see what I have. If I can show you guys. My books might be all over the place. Uh, reference. Reference, reference, reference. Mm. Dang it. You know what? I might have lent some of that stuff out. <laughs> um, yeah, probably. But I think if you Google Vilpu, V-I-L-P-U, he was a teacher at CalArts and he taught a lot of Disney. He taught a lot of Disney uh, folk. And if you can find his stuff online, he has great reference. Black Ice Angel, I can hear your voice having two different conversations. So. Oh, is there reverb? What are you and Shaggy's favorite animals? Okay, actually... I think mine right now is a uh, taper or the tapir, which is that little elephant pig thingy. It's so cute. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like this little elephanty hippo black and gray pig thingy. I love it. And uh, his right now is the okapi because we saw it at the San Diego Zoo and he was like, what is that? That's amazing. And it's kind of like a zebra giraffe both. I don't know, we like these mixed animals that are just so interesting and bizarre. Alright, I'm gonna have to think about pose, but I'm just gonna keep going with this one. Yeah, tapers are so cute. Yeah, it is like a real life drowsy. They are like Pokemon. I'm just like, what is this creature? I do not know. Uh, Mystique, Atlas of Human Anatomy for the Artist by Stephen Rogers Peck is a good book for studying anatomy. Yeah, that one's pretty good. Yes. Feather Heather says, I hear a robin. Yes, it is. Uh, we're hitting twilight very soon. And I think I might cap this off at the 8.30 mark, actually, because um, I'm running out of things to say. <laughs> And uh, hopefully I'll get a good drawing out of the spatch by then. Yes, and Andrew Loomis um, is a really good anatomy, head construction, facial construction. Yes, that is another great book to check out. So what have we said so far? Andrew Loomis is good. Uh, Vilpu, I forget his first name, is good. Um, Stephen Rogers Peck has good work. There's another one. should just start a list for you guys on my blog, actually, that would probably help. I'm going to focus for a second here. Mystique says Bern Hogarth is good too. Lots of good anatomy reference names here. Mad Salty Chip says, have you ever tried to experiment with caricatures? I have tried experimenting. Uh, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> I can't really capture a person's likeness. Um, if you've seen the work of uh, Tom Richmond's blog is really great for cartoony caricatures. Well, I mean, not even just cartoony, he's also... But I mean, he tends to make it more fun and goofy. He uh, works for Mad Magazine. And uh, yeah, he's he's awesome at caricatures. I love to look at his work. I tried to study that, but um, I don't know. I mean, I used to, as a kid, draw my classmates and try and do caricatures, but those were horrible when you look back at them now. Uh, 
Mystique. Yeah, for some reason we can't put links on this site. I also have the Cyclopedia Anatomica. That thing is humongous. Really great breakdown of muscles. You know, if you're also looking for anatomy, if you can find science books or uh, um, if you look in the medical section, sometimes that'll help. I mean, it's very crazy detailed. You probably don't need to look at that too much. Um, my life drawing teacher is actually his, he went to school at OCAD, the Ontario College of Arts, and I think it was like he was studying medical anatomy first and fine art second maybe, but he's just ridiculous with his muscle knowledge. He'll point uh, at our model and just know every little thing going on in the bones and the muscle and what does what and what pulls this and what uh, pushes that. And um, he was my teacher in second year of college and one of our tests was it was like a whole muscle anatomy and you had to point out what everything was. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I couldn't. I ended up just naming muscles like this is Bob and this is Ralph and I don't know. I give up. But I mean just amazing knowledge of it. But yeah, it might be a little bit intense. So yeah, I'd say I'd say wait. I'd say go off drawings first. Yeah, it's it is a fifteen pound book. It is humongous. <laughs> I think it also has some uh, anatomy of horses and cows in there too. If I remember correctly, why is she running? Like Probably gonna finesse this a little bit more later tonight. But for now. But yeah, the Loomis books, I'm pretty sure you it's it's Andrew Loomis. You can get them, I think, at most any bookstore now that they're back in print. Those are great. For anatomy. <laughs> Meow is here. I just looked up Okafi. It sort of looks like Shaggy. <laughs> I'll let him know. <laughs> I think he'd like that. He was so excited when he saw it. He was just like, what is that? Okay, here's Wonder Woman kind of running all crazy at the screen. I'm gonna try another one. TV dinner. Hey Katie, I'm heading to VanCath later this month. Awesome. What's the best way to go about getting feedback on my graphic novel so far? Um, from us or just in general? Because I mean, uh, there might, if you look at the, I don't actually know what the panel lineup is, but there could be some workshops there. I mean, usually conventions have some kind of workshopping place where you can show your book and get feedback. Um, I mean, I'd find someone you trust with storytelling and maybe show it to them or someone you know is going to be honest and maybe a little bit, I don't want to say brutal, but you know, a little bit brutally honest and give you some feedback with that. I mean, mostly I, I bounce stuff off of Shaggy I mean, we're working on the second script for Silly Kingdom right now, and actually yesterday we, we were having a little bit of just trying to figure out the best way to tell a story part, and uh, coming up with that, where it was like, my idea didn't quite work, and then the second idea didn't work, but at least hammering it out helped us come up with an even better idea after that. So yeah, we're very excited to, bring, to start working on that. one more action. It's a lasso. I'm gonna have her swing it around. Feather Heather. Fun animal fact. Clamfish are all born males and later in life may become females. Huh. I'm like Jurassic Park thing. Interesting. It's kind of like they choose based on what the environment requires.
Black Eyes Angel, you stream officially hates me. Yeah, I think it kind of hates me too, actually. We would love to get um, a no commercial. I, I, I was kind of struggling. I wanted to do some Cintiq drawings for you guys today. That way I could be right up against the computer and um, fix mistakes. Right, and then you could see the drawings a little bit clearer. But is that what came to his problem? I couldn't quite figure it out. And I was texting my bro and I think he's preoccupied. And he didn't quite get back. So, so now we're just drawing with the key cam. But yeah, we have to figure out the C-Stream stuff at some point. Uh, Black Ice Angel, are you recording this one? I am, yes. We record uh, every episode, so if you don't catch it or if you miss something due to a commercial, you can always check back later. We've been recording, I think. Yeah, we've recorded every one from the start. So if you can't, if you can't catch this one, no worries. Oh, I'll be giving her crazy arms here. Oh, sorry, Black Eyes Angel. Yeah, there seems to be glitches. You know, they, they seem to record pretty cleanly. I'll, I'll watch back after to make sure there's no glitches, but yeah, it, it's, it's recording, so. Duh. Come on, monitors, shut down. What's going on? The monitor's going to sleep. All right, I think we got about 10 minutes left. I'm just gonna do a short episode today. We'll do a longer one next Wednesday when Shaggy gets back. Cause I mean, we're gonna have a lot to talk to you guys with before we go to band camp, especially for those of you that'll be meeting up with us there. Super excited for that. It sounds like the con's closing pretty early too so that people can get around to a lot of after parties and things. Oh, also, if anybody has any Vancouver food recommendations, we are always down for that. So far we've heard, uh, I think Japa Dog is one, people are saying. Um, a Fighting Panda, you do this every Wednesday? Yes, um, every Wednesday I do a Ustream. Usually my brother's here uh, chatting and I am drawing and we'll cut to the camera so you can see what I'm drawing when the two of us have conversations. Today is a rare day that he couldn't make it, um, but it's every Wednesday, 7.30 EST, and we've got, I think, about 32 you can check out in the archives. So, got a ton. A lot of really fun conversations and stuff. But thanks for stumbling on this, that's cool. Try to be more helpful with art advice. I find it's tricky to draw and think smart at the same time. But I've got to get better at that. I don't know if you guys uh, listen to Bobby Chu's you streams, uh, live streams. He had a really good one that just came out. Um, it's while it's it's like a recording and drawing while he's painting an Adventure Time piece, but it's about the game of life and it's kind of looking at life like an RPG level up. Thing, where it's like, you know, choosing the things you want to get better at, letting the other things support them. Like in school, you can kind of, you can kind of, well, okay. One of the examples is, you know, you're in college, you're in animation college, and you are studying a whole bunch of stuff, but you really, you know, maybe it's time to decide what you really, really want to do. So you can focus on that and let the other ones support it. For me, I mean, I didn't even know what I wanted to do, so I just kind of was okay at everything. Um, but, you know, if I knew back then I really wanted to do storyboards like I do now, maybe I would have focused harder on that and let, you know, I wouldn't let everything else slide, but I would know where to focus all my energies and let other stuff support it. So it's kind of, where do you want to level up? You know, we're all, life is, everything we're doing is just, it's 
It's like a big old RPG. Like, here we want to look. Anyway, he said it a lot better than I was saying it. And I was really inspired this morning, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. But if you go to his website, imaginism.com, there's a bunch of really inspiring interviews, which I really recommend you guys check out. He interviews um, Pixar artists and painters and people from Disney and Sony and DreamWorks and independent comic artists. He's got Mike Mignola on there and Lot, lots of people. It's awesome. Just go to imaginism.com and check out the interviews. If it's a quiet night and you need something to inspire you, or if you need something to listen to while you're working, those are excellent. Imaginism.com. Oh, that's a weird drone. I need to try to balance this out more because you can see the action of this pose is kind of just shooting right off the page, so I gotta fix that. So what I'm gonna do is try and bring this last suit down a bit more. A lot of times when I'm drawing, I'm trying to go with a flow of action. And you generally want to keep things contained in your drawing, and you can see I kind of messed it up because the eye goes all the way up here. So we're gonna fix this. Feather Heather, when I get working on lip sync, I can't listen to podcasts. <laughs> I used to work as a storyboard revisionist, and sometimes part of being a storyboard revisionist is you need to do board conforms, which is essentially where you sit there and you listen to the Leica, which is the animatic, and you try and make sure everything lines up, all the panel numbers. It's, it's very monotonous, but I'd be listening to some great podcasts and interviews, and I'd try and do that at the same time, and it's impossible. How shall I? I'm going to bring it down. Fear my balloon, says Mad Salty Chips. Yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. The balloon of truth. She bonks you on the head with it. I'm going to try and bring this lower so it's going behind her head. So it's coming up from behind. Yeah, it's been a while since I've done lip syncs. It's actually been a while since I've done animation proper. I think the last show I animated on was Iggy Arbuckle, I think. After that I started getting into storyboards. We bought. I'm trying to write up animation revisions. I'm failing right now. <laughs> well, it's hard to give someone a critique when you're listening to someone else talking. <laughs> I gotta get up to the East Coast sometime, man. I haven't been in a while. Actually, do you know if there's, I mean, I know you're new to Canada, but do you know if there's any con conventions out in the East Coast Canada? Is there like a PEI con? Halifax Con, St. John Con. Okay, I think that flow is a lot nicer. Whether I don't, I don't really love it as a drawing, but actually, you know what? This probably makes more sense to flow this way. All right. There is a Halifax con, says Heather Feather. I know Faith Hicks went to it earlier this year. Oh, maybe I will try next year. Faith Hicks is cool. I I, feel, <laughs> I, I wanted to go pick up her comic at TCAP, but she was all sold out by the time I finally hit the floor. Boo. Soon I will have her comics. Yeah, a lot of people did so good at TCAP, they sold out of books early. I know we underestimated how many we needed, that's why my brother had to go run back to my house to pick up more books on Saturday. Alright, that feels a little bit better to me. 
not great, but kind of getting there in terms of flow. You know what I mean though? Like keeping it kind of contained in the drawing. It's a bit of a mess because of all the erasers. But... Feather Heather, I wanted a superhero girl. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I didn't know how popular that one would be. Should have printed more. Closer to characters' personalities. Oh, the lip sync is closer to characters' personalities. Yeah. All right, got just a couple minutes left. Oh, that drawing I'm doing right now. Oh, thank you. Well, I mean, I don't know if typical Wonder Woman looks like this all the time, but maybe I'm going for like a super best friends kind of thing. All right, yeah, as promised, this is going to be a pretty short episode. Um, last part, as threatened. But we will definitely be back. So, okay, well, here's what I was up to today. So these are the last two of the night. We have her kind of derpily running at the screen. We have her with the lasso. We have the first one, where she's just standing around, and then you can see how tight and weird that first drawing is. So... You know, sometimes you got a thousand bad drawings in you, and you gotta <laughs> just nail them, get them out there. A lot of people ask me, I, I need no advice for drawing better, and I mean, of course, there's there's studying is really important, but a lot of times it's just kind of doing it too to just loosen up, and you know, the only way you're gonna get better is to start drawing, and then draw smart, um, figure out what your weaknesses are, and work on those. But that's a whole other. Uh, cool. All right, I think we're getting there. All right, so. I'm gonna go back to Katie Cam. Whoop! My regular cam. Uh, da, 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 da. Logitech camera, built in eyesight. He's there. Okay, so um, it was a pretty short episode today, um, but thank you all so much for joining us again. Uh, we'll be back next Wednesday, 7:30 EST. Uh, my brother will be back, and we will be chatting about VanCap, where you can find us, because we well, don't know what our tables are yet. Um, yeah, well, thanks for thanks for listening. I like giving a bit of advice for drawing, so I'm glad I was able to help out with there. And uh, thanks so much, guys. Um, next week, Shag will be back. And as always, I guess you won't, you won't be able to this. Um, our comic, Silly Kingdom, you can find that at sillykingdom.com, where you'll find fan arts, amazing fan arts by amazing readers and samples. You can see the sample of how we made the comic at the back in the bonus section. Um, I've started putting up character sketches as I'm warming up for book two, and there'll be more of that coming soon, and um, yeah, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys next week, and have an awesome week. Cheers, guys, and stop broadcast, stop record. <laughs>